All right. The topic today is, is America Mystery Babylon? Now, there are a lot of people teaching that Mystery Babylon is the United States of America. Now, we're going to see what the Bible has to say about that. We're going to look at Revelation 17, chapter 17. Chapter 17 is a strong chapter to hear because it really points out what is really going on in Christianity today. As we go through these symbols, it's going to amaze you on what God really wants you and me to know. The reason chapter 17 is such a powerful chapter is because it takes each one of the symbols given and tells us exactly what they mean. You don't have to guess what they are. We start with verse 1 and 2. It says, And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vows, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Verse 2, Which whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Now notice this passage says, I'm going to show you the judgment. Someone or something on earth today is headed to judgment. This judgment has not happened yet. It happens at the same time of the battle of Armageddon. Now, if there's something or someone on this earth being judged, all of us need to know who it is to make sure we're not a part of that judgment. Verse 3. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. I saw a woman upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Now, this lesson is crouched in greatly symbolic terms, but the symbols are interpreted for us in the same chapter. Like I said, you don't have to guess the interpretation of the symbols that were given to us. This is a revolutionary lesson. It is a lesson about the one world church that will follow the false prophet straight into the arms of the Antichrist. Now, most of Christianity, most of Christianity, both Catholic and Protestant will be deceived into following the false prophet into alliance with the Antichrist. Now, chapter 17 of Revelation explains the whole thing. So it's a strong chapter to hear because it really points out what is going on in Christianity today. So we see the scarlet colored beast having seven heads and ten horns and a woman riding upon his back. This beast is the world government beast that is depicted in Revelation 13. In Revelation 13, there's a beast with the body of a leopard, feet of a bear, and mouth of a lion. The ten horns represents the ten armies of the Antichrist. It is the one world government of the Antichrist. This beast is composed into four elements. The body of the leopard, which is Germany. The feet of the bear, Russia. The mouth of a lion is Great Britain, and the ten horns of the beast represents ten kingdoms, the powers of Europe today. Now, the only way you can know that is if you understand Daniel chapter 7. And I mean really understand it. In Daniel chapter 7, there are four separate beasts, a lion with eagle wings, a bear, a four-headed leopard, and a great beast with ten horns. The lion is recognized as the symbol of Great Britain. The bear is the symbol of Russia. The eagle is the symbol of America. Now, the eagle wings were depicted as growing out of the lion, which is where the United States came from, Great Britain, our mother country. Daniel says in verse 4 of chapter 7, I watched until the wings thereof were plucked. So, Daniel chapter 7 is a prophecy of all the nations that will be on earth at the time of the second coming of Christ. Then you go to Revelation 13, written 650 years later, and it depicts all those nations merging into one beast instead of four separate beasts. By the way, Daniel 7.23, it says, these beasts are kingdoms or nations. So we live in a world today of world community and globalization. We're all been taught that we should have a world bank, a world court, and a world health organization. The structure for world government has been established and continues to be established right now. Now, the beast in Revelation 13 
and in Revelation 17 are the same beast. Both have seven heads and ten horns. Only in Revelation 13 it tells us all the elements of the beast. In Revelation 17 it says it is a scarlet beast or red beast. Also in Revelation 17 the beast has a woman riding on his back. A beast in Bible prophecy, like I said, always represents a nation or kingdom. A woman always represents a church. Now let's get that clear in our mind. A beast represents a nation or kingdom. A woman always represents a church. So our first question is, who is the woman in Revelation chapter 17? The harlot whom judgment is decreed upon. We don't have to guess. Verse 18 tells us. Verse 18, and the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigned over the kings of the earth. Bit clue number one, the woman is a city. Now there's a city on earth right now who God has to create judgment on. So the question is, what city is it? Clue number two, it says the woman sits on many waters. What are the waters? Verse 15 tells us, we don't have to guess. And he said unto me, the waters which thou sawest where the horse sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Okay, now let's put these two clues together. You have a city that sits on people, multitudes, nations, and tongues. So you got a city that is the headquarters for a vast international system. Okay, let's go to our next clue. Now the beast according to verse three, has seven heads. Now verse 9 tells us, and here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Now remember, the woman is a city. Now this passage says seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. The city which God has decreed judgment against is the headquarters for an international system and it sits on seven mountains. Now I've been taught that Rome was the city of seven hills. These are the famous hills of Rome. Those are the seven famous hills of Rome. So Rome is the city that God has decreed judgment against. Is it the headquarters for an international system? They claim $1.2 billion inheritance. Is it the headquarters for a church? A woman is always symbolized as a church. So yes, it is. Let's look at the rest of the clues. Verse number four. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. There are two ruling bodies of the Roman Catholic Church, the, co the College of Cardinals and the College of Bishops and Archbishops. It's sort of like the Senate and the House of Representatives. Those are the two ruling bodies that rule the church along with the Pope. It is the official policy of the Roman church that cardinals wear red. Whenever you become a cardinal, you get a red hat, they always tell you. When you become a bishop or archbishop, you wear purple. It is the official color. I did the research. If you see a papal parade of cardinals and bishop come together, you will see a sea of red and purple. Okay, let's look at the next clue. Verse number six. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus Christ. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration, well, has the Roman church shed the blood of the saints? Well, we know that during the Middle Ages, there were millions of people put to death because they were Protestants, because they had left the Roman church. They became convinced that the Roman church no longer taught the Bible. For example, John Huss was burned at the stake because they said he was a heretic. William Tyndale's crime was translating the Bible into the language of the common man so that people could read the Bible. 
They didn't want the common person to have a Bible because the church no longer taught what the Bible taught. So they made it against the law to have a Bible. Well, William Tyndale translated the language of the, of the Bible into the language of the common man. And his sentence for doing that was burning at the stake. And they used the Bibles he translated to set the fire. Then Martin Luther was condemned to die at the Diet of the Worms, but he escaped into the Protestant controlled sector of Germany and the sentencing never happened. Now Martin Luther's crime was he issued a papal bull condemning the entire nation of Norway to death except 55 people he listed. Everybody else was sentenced to death. Now some estimate that 68 million were killed during the Middle Ages, all in the name of Jesus Christ. But of course, Jesus Christ had nothing to do with it. Now we're talking about the judgment of the great harlot that has shed the blood of saints. And this is going to happen again, by the way, during the great tribulation. The Bible teaches that the false prophet is going to enforce the mark of the beast and cause as many who would not worship the beast should be killed. It's going to happen again. Now, that's hard to fathom, but you had to stop and realize that Joseph Stalin killed between 20 and 60 million in political purges back in the 20s, 30s, and 40s. And Hitler in the 30s and 40, 40s killed 6 million Jews. Since World War II, the China Culture Revolution killed over 60 million in recent history. In 1948, you don't hear much about this, but if you would study it, the Cultural Revolution, there were 60 million put to death in China. Another wave of persecution is coming. The Bible calls it the Great Tribulation. Now, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, verse 21, For then shall be great tribulation, such was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Now we come to probably the most critical part of this lesson today. And that's verse number five. And upon her head was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. So the name on her forehead is Mystery Babylon, not Babylon, a mystery. A mystery is something hidden, secret, or veiled. Now, we already know who the woman is. The woman is Rome, the Roman Catholic Church. But yet her name is Mystery Babylon. Why? Because Babylon was the origin of man-made religion. Remember, after the flood, God told the people to scatter out, multiply and replenish the earth. Don't dwell in cities. However, they decided not to do what God said because they had homeland security. Meaning, meaning they felt if they were together, they would find security in their togetherness. Well, once they decided to disobey God, now remember God recently destroyed the people of the world with the flood. So they're thinking if God gets angry with us and sends another flood, he's not going to tell us how to be safe like he did Noah. Therefore, they built a tower into the heavens. So... If another flood came, they can run up the tower and be saved. It was the origin of man-made religion. She is called Mystery Babylon because she is the origin of man-made religion. For example, sprinkling baptism. How many times is that done in the Bible? Zero. But yet, that's the way they baptize. Infant baptism. How many infants were baptized in the Bible? The Bible says, he that believe it and is baptized shall be saved. How about statues in the church? What about praying to Mary? Now, I'm going to be very obvious and open with you. And I know people are going to criticize me for this, but I can't tell you the truth without telling you the truth. So Rome became the origin of man-made religion. So her name is Mystery Babylon the Great. And then it says her name is mother of harlots okay God already told us she is the great harlot but now it tells us she is the mother of harlots which means she has daughter harlots right she has daughter harlots that are in the same business as their mother 
Now let's pause and understand why the Catholic Church is depicted as a harlot. 